All right, for this painting, I'm going to be using my Holbein acrylic gouache. I am going to use Smalt Blue for the jar. I am going to use Coral Red for the background of the wall. Sepia for the table. Primary Black for the lid, along with Primary White. So, and for the hearts, I will be using Shell Pink, Rose, Ice Green, Leaf Green, Primary Yellow. Actually, I think I'm going to switch that out for Mustard. Prussian Blue. Wine Red. Wand Brilliant, and Turquoise Blue. Those are the colors I'm going to be using for this painting. So yeah, there's a pretty good many. I have been collecting these for a while and I absolutely love my whole bunch acrylic wash. Um, I'm going to work with these a little bit differently than I normally do. I'm gonna work with them more on a wash. I'm not going to be putting them out on a, the palette here because I really don't need that much for this little bitty painting. So I am just actually going to get my brush wet. I'm using a Nick Pro number two round. I bought these off of Amazon. It was a collection of brushes to try out. Um, and I like the grip. So my brush is damp gonna just dip in and get some sepia like I said this is fairly expensive paint and I don't really um, need a lot and I don't want to waste it so because it does not re-wet because it is acrylic gouache not regular gouache and so just it's still gonna be matte um, it may not be fully flat color which is what I what I really didn't wasn't really wanting anyway for this. I want to just try it out using more of a watered down effect, not straight from the tube, and work it like that. So right now I'm working on painting the negative space around the jar of what is the table. Again, I'm using just some inexpensive watercolor paper from Hobby Lobby. It is their brand of watercolor paper. And what I do like about this acrylic gouache, it dries pretty quickly. So I can work a little quicker with it um, in between and not worry about things not being dry. And you can layer it pretty well. And it's not going to re-wet, so I don't have to worry about that. And so the layers always work from back to front when you're working with acrylic wash. So work from the background to the foreground. And that will actually help you achieve the layers that you want. Um, because it is not going to re-wet. It's not going to get... It's not going to re-wet on you. Now, I, while it was still damp, I am pulling a little more water into this because I want... I'm going to take advantage of the properties of this paint to create a little more of a wash effect, but a matte wash effect. So this is going to have to take just a second to dry. Um, under these lights, it'll probably dry a little bit quicker. I do not have my fan on. But if you notice, you get a little bit of a wash effect, and that's what I'm wanting. But it is shiny because it is wet. I'm just going to dry it off. So again, that was the sepia. And I'll put a list of the colors in the description box below. My background. I really like this coral red. Um, it is one of my favorite colors that they have. Um, I just like coral. So, alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the top and work down 
so this can dry a little bit more. The edge is dry, but the rest of it is not. So a good wet brush. And I'm just gonna start up here. Same thing, I want it to be, I want to see some texture, but we are only doing the negative space around the jar right now. The negative space is all we're doing. And adding more water while it's while it's wet on the paper does give you um, a more of a wash effect. If you want a more solid gouache style, you can use it with less water or no water at all added to your paint. But I do use it, I wanted to use it like this to give a more, a little bit of a watercolor effect without watercolor. Because I'm going to do one that is watercolor. I'm going to paint one of these series in watercolor. Negative painting can be fun. And one thing about this gouache is that it's opaque enough once it dries that if I do mess up a little bit, I, it, I can go right over it with the other colors. And it won't, you won't see my little mix up. I really just need a, just a dab of this paint for this section right here because I'm going to get some water, not that much, and paint around it. Alright, so we're going to let this dry. I really, really like the texture I'm getting from this. So, let's let that dry, and I'll be back in a second. All right, it's pretty dry, um, so I'm going to work on the jar. It's dry enough that I can get in here. It's a little wet still here, but other than that, I can paint around. I'm going to use a smaller brush for this. I'm going to use a zero round just to get in around these little the edges of the hearts. Um, I'm using small blue, my favorite blue, from Holbein. I really, 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 really love this blue. And right now I'm just trying to get it watered down enough that it gives me that the color, the texture and color that I want. And I will say, sometimes using a smaller brush is actually harder than using a big brush and getting in the areas. I don't know why. I think it's just my brain. But, alright, so I'm trying to use it really, really watered down, but not this watered down. Just a little more in. A little more pigment in there. And paint up against... Sometimes I think it's the brushes. I'm really, really bad with brushes, so I don't like buying expensive brushes because I'm the type that, like I did this past weekend, will leave the studio on Saturday and come back in on Monday and realize I left my brushes in water. Yeah. So I've ruined some expensive brushes, and so I'm sort of gun-shy on... <laughs> spending the money for an expensive brush because I know how I am. So, yeah. 
think this one's got like a really, really long little hair at the end and it's getting on the earth. So, there we go. And if you see, I went over the edge there, so that's, like I said in one of the pre in the previous video, it it if it shows up when it dries, it just makes it look more transparent because it's showing through the the blue or the color of the jar. But if it doesn't, it's fine. So now I've got to keep this consistency of paint down in between the hearts. So yeah, let's see how that works. So now I'm just going to add some water and pull the pigment into the areas between the hearts. And like I said before, the shape of the heart when you're doing this um, negative space painting isn't as important because you're going to be able to go over it when you paint the heart itself. Um, you'll have a chance to clean it up when you paint the heart. And I can see where I let it dry. So I've got to add some more pigment to blend that in. Let me speed some of this up because it's going to take a little bit to keep painting inside these heart these lines. But that's all I'm doing is I'm wetting it and then grabbing just a tad bit more pigment and pulling the pigment into the areas that are wet. Alright, now to let this dry, and if you notice, it's getting some really fun texture that really does look like glass. So, let's see. Uh, I can get it to focus. There we go. Okay, everything is dry, and now they're all dry. So now I'm going to work on my hearts. There are nine hearts. I have nine different colors. If you don't have that many colors, you can mix colors. Or you could use the same um, coral red that you used in the that I used in the background to add to here. This you definitely will not need much color. What I am going to do is I'm probably going to use it a little bit more um, out of the tube and not wet it as much because I want to be able to cover up the edges. I'm going back to my number two round brush because I actually can get better details sometimes with my a number two round than I can with the zero, just for the simple fact that the hairs are so tiny, and sometimes if I just use my brush and just do it lightly, I can get good detail. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start just by picking any color. So let's start with shell pink. My brush is damp, but it is not wet. Um, I just wanted it damp just so the bristles are not completely dry. So 
I'm just going to dip in. Just get a really the tiniest amount of paint. And I'm going to start in the bottom corner just so that I'm not reaching over myself. I'm going to start in the bottom left corner. And I'm going to paint the heart. Need just a tad bit of water because it will dry pretty opaque even if it is um, slightly watered down. But I just wanted to make sure it moves easier on the pa on the paper. And wash my brush out. Dry it out on the paper, close my brush up. And now I'm going to just, like I said, just grab. I'm trying to work so it's not so too much of similar colors near each other. So I tried to put them out where I would grab them differently. And now, again, just working on the left side so that this will dry without my hand getting into it because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, start on the right. And turn, this is just a little piece of paper, so I find that turning it actually makes it easier on my wrist. and. Um, and easier to get the detail down. So, all right. So we've used mustard and shell pink, and this, I want to have all light colors all in the same spot. So now I'm going to grab this Prussian blue. Like I said, it is one of my most favorite dark blues. it's so just rich color and look at that that just gives something just I don't know something deep about that one and I might actually go a little bit back over that pink um, just because I watered it down a little more than I was really wanting to. So I want the hearts to really, you realize that they are solid. The blue is fine looking translucent because it is glass. So there we go. And now let's pick up do some wine red and I'm gonna do it down here right beside the shell pink because I don't want it up here because it is the basically the red version of how deep this blue is here so wine red like I said I've been collecting these over the past year I did not buy them all at once because they are expensive um, but I do love these paints. I really want to get do more with them because they've hardly been used. Because I bought some of them, especially this one in the Prussian blue, right before the Christ right before the holidays hit, and then I moved into the studio, and yeah, so they didn't get used as much as I would like. But also, I don't use a lot of them because they are so highly pigmented, you don't need much. So, let's grab this leaf green. And go right above this red. I'm trying to be random, but I'm also trying to think about it. About what colors work best beside each other. This leaf green is a little le little translucent when it's wet, but it does dry per very opaque, just like all of these colors do. Which is one of the main reasons that I like them so much, because I can layer them up. I've always wanted to try, like, regular, wanted to use regular gouache, but 
because it re-wets, it doesn't work for me. I'm too, you know, I have too heavy of a hand when it comes to adding the second cup, there's another layer, and I end up just creating mud. All right, so the next one is ice cream, which is more of a teal, turquoise, like really teal color. Um, it's more of a blue to me than a green, but I'm going to go ahead and put it down right here. So I did light, dark, light, just changing the value up a little bit. So, yeah. And then, like I just pulled too much out, I'm just going to wipe it off. I use these under papers when I make journals, so this paint that I get on here is not wasted. It really ends up going somewhere else. Alright, so one Brilliant. This is another one that I really like. It's very peachy. And it's, you know, it's fun. Because these are so highly pigmented, you don't have to worry about a lot of color loss. Then I have turquoise blue and rose, so I'm not going to put the turquoise blue right beside the Prussian blue. I'm going to put it over here. So I'm going to grab my rose next. And, wow, I just realized I am missing the color of my paint, so I'm going to have to find it. It is opera. It is a bright, bright pink. And it's my favorite. I have no clue what happened to that. It doesn't scan well, so I was really wanting to scan this piece, and so it won't scan well at all. This one will, but Opera will not. But I do have to figure out where it's at, because it is my favorite color. basically this neon pink that's not showing up on camera so well. It's neon pink. So, alright, we're almost done with this one, except I do have to add the white detail up there. So, let's grab some turquoise blue. There we go. So all our little hearts are done. Because we didn't use, put too much water with this, it will dry really quick. So I'm just gonna grab, use the same brush. Like I said, I really, you know, it's easy sometimes to use a larger brush. Grab me a little white. I do need a little bit of a dampness to this brush right now. A little bit of white. I'm just adding just a little bit of detail to the jar lid. And a highlight to the jar.
Turn the brush, add a little bit more highlight down here. And there we go. This painting is done. I did not film this acrylic one, but I've done acrylic, acrylic paint markers, and acrylic wash. So, I have two more that I'm probably going to work up in this series. But yeah, so this is, you know, it's a fun way of trying out the same design with different mediums. So give it a try. Come up with a simple little painting that you like and try it in with all your different mediums that you have. Basically, I'm trying to get to where I use what I have because I have a huge collection of art supplies that I have been collecting for a long time and I really do want to get to use them this year and that's been that's my goal try not to buy any art supplies unless they're for my art classes that I teach so for my personal stuff for YouTube unless I run out of it I'm not gonna buy any art supplies for right now I've made it through the month of February January February has started and let's see how long I go um, but yes yeah, so if you would like to get a tracer of this pattern and the exact step-by-step -step of how to do this painting you can in my patreon it is the featured painting of the month so for um, joining for five dollars you get the tracer how to paint this as well as every archive post that I have done on my patreon so if you'd like to do that the link is below and I would love to have you join the community if you like this video Please click that like button, hit the subscribe button, click the bell notification so you'll get notified when I post a new video, and leave me a comment and let me know what you think. What is your favorite art supply to try?